rally civilizations, they're kind of important to society. This is when nomadic groups started merging together and living in large societies. And don't get me wrong, there were still nomadic societies, but there was just more people living in an urban area. The four main um, river valley civilizations, which we're talking about in this video, are the Mesopotamia, the Indus River Valley Civilization, the Yangtze Civilizations, and Mesoamerica. Before there were river valley civilizations, there was the Paleolithic time period, where there was no agriculture at all. Eventually, we started heading towards the Neolithic time period, when agriculture started. The river valley civilizations were the start of the Neolithic times. Agriculture began, and domestication of animals allowed for large groups of people to live together. So what makes a river valley civilization a river valley civilization? Well, it has to be by a river. Duh. They're large, and large groups of people started living together. They also saw the first form of organized government. Of course, on the topic of River Valley civilizations, Mesopotamia should definitely come to mind. Its name literally describes its geography, in that it means the land between two rivers, those rivers being the Tigris and Euphrates. Now, although these rivers were very important to society for help with enriching the soil for agriculture, like date palms, vegetables, and animal grazing, these rivers flooded unpredictably. Gods were worshipped in this time period, so ziggurats were built to worship them. These were stuffed pyramids made of stone. The priests were the only ones who could communicate with the gods, which won them the love of the people. The literature was important to these people, and the Epic of Gilgamesh was one of the stories that still remains. Story time! Gilgamesh was about a man named Gilgamesh who was raised in the forest with a bunch of animals. Eventually, he found civilization and met a girl who... He liked a lot, but the current king was very tyrannical, and he did. The people of the city did not like him at all. So when Gilgamesh came along, he won the love of these people, and eventually this king was not liked anymore. So Gilgamesh eventually ended up ruling with his lovely little wife. <laughs> that was awesome. Cuneiform was the first form of handwriting that allowed for large, organized societies to form. Bronze metal liturgy became popular during the Sumer reign. The Sumers were the first people to establish a territorial kingdom and to start trading with others. Sumer had a very centralized rule, and ruling over city-states proved to be more effective than over a country. However, regional empires started emerging from city-states, and the Akkadians and the Babylonians started overruling the Sumerians. The first empire really began with Sargon of Akkad, who was successful in both administrating and conquering. However, they fell because of rebellion and nomadic invasion. King Hammurabi took over and established the Babylonian Empire and ended up ruling it even better than Sargon. He established the Code of Hammurabi, which was the first set of written lo laws. He came up with the concept of eye for an eye, which basically is the lex talionis, or the law of retaliation. In the Assyrian Empire, they were very brutal. This is also when women saw a decline in their roles. The Indians had to trade with someone. One of these somebodies was the Indus River Valley. The Indus civilization never fails to amaze historians on their efficiency. Their geography allowed for drainage and irrigation systems to be built. Unlike Mesopotamia, their rivers flooded predictably. So it flooded twice a year and gave them the most powers available than any other empire of their time period. The two biggest cities they had were Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, and they traded with Mesopotamia. The evidence lies in the seals that are found in both sites. The Indus River civilization was the largest civilization of its time. Their biggest building was the Great Bath, which historians believe to be some sort of great baptismal pool. Yeah. They followed a polytheistic religion and placed a lot of emphasis on the fertility goddess. We can see this through the clay figurines that were made throughout the time. Very little about their lifestyle beyond what can be studied in architecture. Although there were some merchants, most people were farmers, focusing on crops like food and cotton. Their main checks... Their main trade were textiles. There are two theories in the decline of the Indus River Valley civilization. One was the fact they did not have any weapons. 
So when the Aryans came and invaded their territory, they had no way of defending them and fighting them off. The second theory was the fact they could have used up all of their resources and had to move. Unlike the Indus River Valley and Mesopotamia, the Zhou Dynasty actually had to overthrow people to gain their empire grounds. They overthrew the Shang Dynasty and used the Mandate of Heaven to justify their actions. They lasted from 1122 to 256 BCE. The Mandate of Heaven was a way for ruling elites to connect with Heaven. It also allowed them to justify their actions in government and allowed them to do whatever they wanted to. Gods were not worshipped in this time period, nor was religion prominent. But what they did worship was ancestors. They performed rituals and consulted the ancestors in times of hardship, like in Mulan. Women had little influence on society. Eventually, the best they could be known for was marrying their husband. In this patriarchal society, literature became important. Oracle bones threw light on the type of society they had and the writing they used. They used a mixture of ideograms and pictographs. The Book of Songs was a composition of poetry and is one of the four surviving works of the time. Despite treacherous mountains and large deserts that surrounded the Zhou Dynasty, long-distance trading still occurred. Iron metallurgy diffused into China, and eventually their monopoly on bronze metallurgy faded. Shipbuilding was a prominent business along coastal China. King Yu was credited with the invention of the sail, but no evidence lies that there were sails before 500 BCE. What does show is that there were large or propelled ships before 2000 BCE. They had an ultimate empire, but they had a decentralized rule because it was such a large territory for the time period. So the emperor appointed subordinate territories for, to rule. This ultimately led to their decline because all of these subordinate territory kings tried to like, overtake the Zhou dynasty. So that led them into the period of warring states from 403 to 221 BCE. And they officially ended in 256 BCE. Now the Thanks. Indus River Valley Civilization, Mesopotamia, and Zhou Dynasty all traded and influenced each other and diffused their technology throughout the lands. That was not the case for Mesoamerica. Okay, ready? Isolated more than a teenage fangirl with internet. The society emerged in Central America from 1200 to 400 BCE. Little is known about the Olmecs, but what is known is they made giant heads out of basalt rock, which is impressive because they didn't have any building technology or wheels that could be found. Historians believe that the Olmecs were authoritarian in nature. The first capital was at San Lorenzo and lasted 400 years. Levento is next and lasted from 800 to 400 BCE. The last capital was at Zapote, which lasted from 400 to 100 BCE. They had abundant rainfall and created drainage systems to prevent flooding. What archaeologists believe is that they influenced the Mayans greatly. It lasted from 300 to 1100 CE in Central America. Gee, Miss Gates, that sure is swell. <laughs> the call was the major political center between the 4th and the 9th century. They har their main harvest were maize, co cotton, and cacao beans. Kingdoms fought a lot, and the war captives were often used for human sacrifice and tortured. In Yucatan, a city emerged named Chichen Itza, which dampened the hostility and integrated the captives into society to make them useful instead of just killing them. Really, they were very different from the world. In the Popova, it shows that gods used maize and water to create humans, which later turned into flesh and blood. To please these same gods, the people used human sacrifice and blood relating rituals. These sacrifices were often used in times of drought or in times of hardship. War captives were often tortured and then sacrificed. Although renowned for creating the end of the world phenomenon, the Mayans contributed much to society. They created a calendar that was 365.24 days long. That was only 17 seconds off, which was impressive for their time. They also figured out the number zero, which helped them figure out taxes and tribute and establish a math system. The empire began declining in 800 CE for unknown reasons. Eventually, the empire was deserted and all that was left were ruins. Now, these societies were all different, but contributed a lot to society. If they didn't start farming, imagine what we wouldn't have. We would have lost gems like microwavable pizza and Pop-Tarts. 
Although these societies ended at some point, it allowed for more complex things to emerge. Comment any questions below, and we will answer. Good luck on midterms!